Hi boys and girls, for tonight's session of Did You Know, we are going to talk about Shrove Tuesday. Now I'm not going to keep you too long because we have a date with a pancake dinner at Grace Church tonight, virtually, using the same Zoom information as our worship service and we are all going to tune in and eat pancakes and have a fabulous time together. But when I thought, let's talk about Shrove Tuesday. In England, we call it Pancake Day. Well, you know what? There is a lot that I do not know. So I have pulled up some information and I would like to share it with you. You might wonder why people eat pancakes. Why pancakes? Of all the things to eat. Why do people eat pancakes on Shrove Tuesday, Pancake Day, whatever you may call it, the day before Lent? Why do people eat pancakes? Well, believers around the world celebrate Shrove Tuesday each year. And here are some ways that people celebrate it. Shrove Tuesday and as I said, I had to look up a lot of this information myself. Um, and what I have here is some great information and some of it I'd never heard of before. So Shrove Tuesday is held on the day before Ash Wednesday. Now, I'm hoping you know that, that tomorrow is Ash Wednesday and we have services, virtual services at 12 and 7, 12 p.m. and 7 p.m. It signals the end of Epiphany, the season of Epiphany, and the beginning of Lent. Now, we've been talking about Lent because we discussed fasting before, and as I hope you all know, we have our Lent study starting next week. Children's Lent study, youth Lent study, and adult Lent study, all on different days, but the children's Lent study will be on Thursday evenings at five o'clock. Lent is a time of renewal prior to Easter, a time to kind of reflect on ourselves and renew ourselves for the better before Easter. Um, it is, as I said before, Ash Wednesday, and it is the final day, Shrove Tuesday, so today, is the final day of Shrovetide. I haven't heard that before. Shrovetide. A three-day period leading into Lent. Shrove Tuesday occurs precisely 47 days before Easter. And it's a movable feast depending on when Easter will be. So it's a different date each year, most of the time. The name Shrove Tuesday, Shrove, its name is derived from the term Shrive, which refers to the ritual of confession for sins. You know when you say to God, you know what, I've done... I've done some things I'm not proud of, or um, there's some things that I'd like to change, things like that. So confession of sins is when you talk to God, maybe about your faults or things that you would like to change. Um, and that leads into the season of Lent. So you kind of replenish yourself, you open yourself and you ready yourself for the season of Lent to lead up to Easter. In traditions such as uh, Roman Catholicism, a priest might pronounce God's forgiveness um, for your sins. Um, uh, the tradition of shriving before Lent dates back to the Middle Ages. Now, we are Methodists, boys and girls. We are the United Methodist Church. And any sins that you need to confess to God, you can do so in whichever personal space you choose. Um, 
But it's important, however you choose to do it, to have that conversation with God and to recognize that each of us has our faults and that we would like to do better. Okay, who celebrates Shrove Tuesday? It's not just the United Methodist Church or the Roman Catholic Church. It is observed by many church traditions, um, Episcopal, Anglican, now these are all different um, types of churches, Anglican, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, um, there's lots and lots of churches that recognize the season of Lent, Shrove Tuesday and the season of Lent. Um, it seems to be getting more and more popular as the years go by and more and more younger people are taking up traditions during Lent. Traditions as in giving something up, taking something on or just being having an open heart to improving yourself. Kind of taking away the the rough edges and trying to smooth yourself out a little bit. That's the way I personally think of it myself. Um, so how do we celebrate Shrove Tuesday? Essential to this day is the practice of confession of sins. We've talked about that, confession of sins. Confession of sins doesn't always have to be to somebody else. It can be a personal experience and conversation that you have with God. Um, confession allows us to acknowledge that we're not perfect and that's okay. I'm not perfect. I never will be perfect. We all want to be perfect, but that is something that we can strive towards. Jesus is the only perfect person that has walked this earth. Okay, it's a day of celebration. It's today, as in Shrove Tuesday. It's the last opportunity before the Lent season begins if you're going to be giving things up, such as um, foods like meat and fish and sugar and eggs and dairy. And those used to be the things a long time ago that people would give up, the eggs and the meat and the fish. And um, with it, well, so Shrove Tuesday, it has a variety of rituals and customs associated with it. And this is where Pancake Day comes in, which is what we call it in England, Pancake Day. Because you go to your cupboards and you get out all the food that you're going to be giving up for Lent the eggs and the, the, the milk and all the fatty foods, all the foods that are considered extravagant. Um, they might not seem extravagant now in this day and age because they are very plentiful. But a long time ago, these foods were not plentiful. So um, sugars, eggs, milk. And guess what pancakes are made of? Sugar, eggs, milk. They don't always come out of a box, boys and girls. Pancakes can be made from scratch. And um, those are some of the ingredients. So what people used to do is just empty out their cupboards and make a big pancake feast to celebrate the Shrove Tuesday, the day before Lent begins, when we humble ourselves and bring ourselves down into a time of less extravagance and less uh, indulging ourselves and more in conversation with God and what can we do to better ourselves. How can families incorporate Shrove Tuesday into their traditions? All right, so how to use the time for spiritual growth together as a family? Hmm, now this one's funny not funny, a coincidence. Consider asking your church to observe Shrove Tuesday together with a pancake dinner or host a feast tonight at 6 p.m. We are having a pancake dinner. We are not gonna be in person like we are normally. 
<coughs> excuse me, where the youth serve us pancakes and some of us uh, eat sausage and, you know, we have that great time together. We're taking it virtually this year and it's going to be just as much fun. It won't be the same as sitting at a table with all of our, the people from our church and friends and family, but we still get to spend that time together. And that's what's important. We get to have that celebration. So we don't need to ask our church to do that because our church is already doing that. Our church comes together. God is working so powerfully through Grace United Methodist Church. And um, tonight is gonna to be a great time. In fact, it's in two hours time. So I better not keep you for too long. Another idea, you can set aside time each day to focus on scripture that highlights God's forgiveness. Because like I said, we are working on making ourselves better, polishing ourselves, you know, taking off those rough edges. So if you make that time to talk to God and ask for forgiveness daily, you don't have to wait till Sunday to ask for forgiveness. You can ask for forgiveness or if you don't feel you are ready to be asking for God's forgiveness, boys and girls, maybe you can just say, God, help me to be a better person. Help me to help others more. Help me to find ways to reach out to others that could use my help. Um, so that is another prayer that you can offer up to God. Um, books there's different books during the Lent study there are different books that we can read together every Thursday as I said there will be a children's Lenten study there's also going to be a youth and adult study on different days but look on our church website graceumc.org and you will find those studies and I really think that is an important part of the journey because Lent it's a journey it's leading up to Easter so Lent is definitely a journey and I encourage you, however old, young, middle-aged, no matter what age you are, there is something for you that Grace United Methodist Church is offering. And if there's nothing that you can see that piques your interest or something you think, you know what, I really wish that they were offering this, let me know, let me know. And we may be able to make that happen because um, as I said, it's a journey and we're in this together. How does Shrove Tuesday prepare us for Lent? This is how we're going to finish. How does Shrove Tuesday prepare us for Lent? While expressions of Shrove Tuesday or Pancake Day vary from culture to culture, many Christians continue to observe it with confession and in addition to Feasting and celebration. So that would be today, Shrove Tuesday, the day before Lent. Feasting and celebration, like we will be doing tonight. Celebrating virtually as a congregation. It is a reminder that God's people are entering the Lenten season. The Lenten season of fasting and self-denial. Now, Self-denial, you might wonder, we talked about giving things up before, but we also talked about adding things in. I encourage you to go on to our um, Engage Children's Ministry Facebook page and watch the Did You Know Fasting? Because I not only talk about fasting as in giving something up, but I talk about maybe adding something in instead. Um, it's not always best to give something up. Sometimes the world needs you to add something in. Shrove Tuesday prepares believers for Lent by allowing time for reflection and spiritual renewal before entering the Lenten season. So that's all I have that I've been reading to you. Um, I, I just thought that that was such a great article that I wanted to read it right out to you rather than just giving you my own words. Um, 
but but Lent is so important, boys and girls. You're not too young to observe Lent. You're not. There is something for everybody out there. Even if you just take on reading one Bible verse a day, hey, you've added something in. As I said, fasting can mean giving something up. It can mean giving up a food. It can mean um, giving up talking bad about people. It can mean it can mean so much. As I said, go go back and look at look at what we posted on our engaged children's ministry Facebook page. But just as important as giving something up maybe you need to add something in. Maybe that needs to be our Lenten study, our children's Lenten study, or youth Lenten study, or adult Lenten study. Or, I tell you what, I'll give you a challenge. Do all three. Thursdays is our children's study. Everyone's welcome. Sundays at four is our youth Lenten study. Everyone is welcome. Wednesdays at 6.30, I believe, is our adult Lenten study. Everyone is welcome. I encourage you to do one, two, or all three of those. And uh, I promise you, somewhere along this journey, along this Lenten journey, preparing ourselves for Easter, your life will be changed. Okay, my lovelies. I love each and every one of you. I'm signing off so that I can go and make some pancakes and I will be catching up with you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.